Hi guys, so I'd heard about the various books that were on the Bailey's Women's Prize for Fiction shortlist but I'd yet to get around to reading any of them when the winner was announced so I thought the best place to start I suppose would be with the winner which was Naomi Alderman's The Power. I would describe it as a dystopian novel and it's set up as a historical novel written by Neil Adam Arman which is an anagram for Naomi Alderman, uh, written several years in the future um, in an alternate reality in which women suddenly gain the power to conduct electricity through their hands, inflicting intense pain and even death. It of course causes massive worldwide upheaval as women find themselves wielding almost absolute power over men, and I think it does kind of prove the saying, absolute power corrupts absolutely, and it shows quite a bleak outlook for the future if this kind of power shift was to happen, because women do some pretty terrible and needless acts of violence against men in the novel. I'm going to keep this video spoiler free so I won't talk about the specifics of the plot because I know a lot of people haven't got around to reading it yet but um, I think these kind of books which think speculatively about the future if something as cataclysmic as this were to happen really interesting um, so I'm going to talk more specifically about how it deals with gender in the book because I think that is really one of the main themes. I find that dystopian novels that look at how women are treated in the future tend to accentuate the problems that they face today and look at how this could potentially devolve into tyranny and torture with men still being the ones wielding the power over women. Um, and I think most notably would be Margaret Atwood's The Handmaid's Tale which was definitely an inspiration for this novel and in fact Margaret Atwood was a mentor to Naomi Alderman and you can absolutely see the parallels there. I think this book's particularly interesting because it totally reverses this gender dichotomy and uh, it imagines an almost in an unimaginable future in which women wield total power. And it reminded me in a way of Mallory Blackman's Knots and Crosses, but um, instead with reversing the racial hierarchy, it does that with gender, uh, which I found really interesting. Also by reversing the status quo in this way, I think it really makes us think about a lot of the things that we believe to be true about gender in particular. From the very first page of the book, it struck me how modern it was. It's not talking about some alternate reality or um, some different past, but is very much rooted in our present with mentions of Instagram and Primark and Fox News. And I found it quite jarring to, to read because I think mostly because the books that I read are generally set either in a, a past or an alternate future but not really in a present that I recognise as much as I did the one in The Power. I think Naomi Alderman chose to write it in this specific way very deliberately because al although the plot of the novel itself is quite implausible with women being able to channel electricity, um, its frequent allusions to popular culture and technology really ground it in our reality and make it all the more foreboding because I can imagine the media and politics reacting in the way it does in this novel which is pretty terrifying and in this way it gains a kind of credibility because it feels when you're reading it as if what's happening is really not out with the realms of possibility. As well as the more short-term changes of immediate violence towards men, the novel explores in depth the changes in the psyche of young people um, in that girls are militarily trained and have confidence in their abilities whereas boys are always made to feel inferior and act embarrassed and sheepish around girls. When I was reading this I definitely thought it showed an entire reversal in the gender roles that are assigned to us in society now um, in that girls are often made to feel weaker both physically and psychologically than boys and I think the novel definitely does this for a reason. I think the novel is trying to display that the gender traits that we often see in men like machismo and inherent confidence in their abilities are not biological but they're cultivated by the society in which we grow up. There's no getting away from the fact that a lot of the women in this novel are downright cruel and they don't bear the power that they're given with any level of responsibility and in this way it's a very sobering read because I do feel like it, um, it shows that women are not necessarily inherently less violent than men but they have less power in society to use this violence. I think unfortunately many women would react in this way if they were given this type of power and I think Naomi Alderman is trying to say that it's an element of human nature rather than male or female biology that drives us to sometimes act in these ways. There was a quote I really liked about this and it's from right at the end of the book. It's not a spoiler for the plot but if you don't want to hear it you can skip forward 20 seconds or so and it says in a letter from Neil, the fictional author of the book, 
Gender is a shell game. What is a man? Whatever a woman isn't. What is a woman? Whatever a man is not. Tap on it and it's hollow. Look under the shells. It's not there. And I think it definitely opens up a lot of discussions on gender um, and some of the distinguishing markers that we put on male and female that are potentially arbitrary. This is definitely a very ambitious novel, particularly for the, the length, which is just over 300 pages, um, because it considers the massive changes that this power brings on a global scale, and it looks at revolts and uprisings worldwide and the changes that it brings to the education system and politics and religion in particular, that's really interesting, and also in the criminal world, where women can just really do as they please. I felt as I was reading it that the novel definitely takes you on a ride. It doesn't necessarily explain everything, but it just lets you get a feel for what the world would be like if this happened. And although there is progression in the plot, I think it's more the atmosphere that's important and also the relations between the characters. I think the pacing was also really good throughout and it's actually quite a page turner. Um, and it's also written in quite a simple style, it's easy to follow, but just beneath the surface I think it's constantly asking very tough questions. Considering it's a very weighty subject matter, it's actually still a very enjoyable read, and it has plenty of moments of real humour, and it doesn't feel like it's trying to shove any opinions down your throat. I think it opens up lots of avenues of, of ideas, um, but it lets the reader kind of formulate these ideas on their own. So I'm going to stop talking there. I think I could go on further, but uh, if you've not read it already, I think it's worth doing and you can sort of think about these ideas yourself. But uh, it's definitely worth reading if you haven't. It's just a really enjoyable book. So anyway, thank you for watching this video. I hope you found it interesting. And if you have any suggestions for other books I could read or make a video about based on this one, uh, then absolutely let me know in the comments. That would be great. Um, and of course, feel free to subscribe. I'll be posting again later this week. Um, but thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye!